Good morning, good morning, good morning. It is June the 9th. I am doing an update to events that is going on. Um, we're in a season of transition, and I kind of wanted to keep a, a recording of um, the things that are happening, things that, that are being said that are significant. wanted to kind of track this, maybe put it in a book or do some type of um, recording to pass it on because I think some things that's going to happen that are significant and, and I wanted to keep a record of it. Um, yesterday had an interesting situation where uh, I got a phone call from a relative that I hadn't spoken to it for a long time. He said, uh, you've been on my mind. And so I went, reached out and uh, we spoke for about an hour. Uh, also spoke with another individual that I don't normally speak to at length for one of the members of the church, a close friend of my, my wife more so, and spoke about some things that the Lord was sharing with her and what, what she was getting involved with as well. But both of the conversations were quite insightful. And um, I sort of wanted to um, kind of chronicle that a little bit and, and put it into a format that uh, that um, would be, again, good for future reference. Um, as I said, this is June the 9th, 2022. And um, the other, my cousin spoke about something the Lord shared with him about anointing and and um, understanding and and where the Lord shared with him that um, they are the same that that you can as you get understanding you get anointing and anointing is interestingly enough um, when we use it in the church, we're talking about power. We're talking about a grace. We're talking about uh, an influence. We're talking about um, uh, a, uh, a, the presence of God. And so when the anointing is present, um, there is an opportunity to do some things, break through some things, overcome some things that you would not normally be able to see or won't be able to do it uh, in, in near as much time. And the understanding that came away from the conversation was that as you get understanding of God's word and God's ways, oh, let me change that, come down here. As you get understanding, you gain anointing um, in that area. And so, um, and, and, I, and as he said that, what I thought about was every time I heard good teaching that opened my eyes to a greater understanding about God's ways or what the word of God was trying to communicate. Um, and sometimes we have a tendency to read over the word of God looking for um, the bigger revelations that we forget about um, the little nuances in the scripture, what is being said and what's not being said or what is being said, said specifically. And those individuals uh, who are just um, wordsmiths, they're the ones who tend to uh, unearth these types of, of meanings that, that add uh, strength to your, to your understanding of the word. And so, um, and, and I have to probably cap point out as well that we realize that not only do you get understanding through good teaching, but it's through prayer. God, you have to want to take on a greater um, knowledge and understanding of God because it comes with a responsibility. When you, um, when you hear the word, you have a responsibility to abide by it, to, to do, to live by it. And so... Um, just wanted to, to capture, uh, capture that. The other um, thought was on uh, covenant and, and that where we understand that to be righteous 
is to be in covenant. So when I'm, you are made righteous, um, which is interesting because I had, haven't brought that into the present day. Um, but when God spoke with Abraham and made a covenant with him, he became in right standing with God. It was because faith in God gave him right standing with God. And right standing is not only having, um, being dabbed or God considered his belief as him walking upright before him, but it also means that when I'm in covenant with you, you have right standing with me. And, and I know that there's so much more that can be brought out of that. Um, Elder Patricia Johnson, member of our church, was sharing with me how God was opening her eyes and understanding about this. And it was just ministering to me. Just I'm looking forward to the book that she's been encouraged to write along this line. Uh, because I know she's going to take these theological terms and these churchy terms that we have become accustomed to and break it down and says, okay, in the original language or when God spoke this to the people, I mean, I'm going to make a covenant with you. This is what it meant to them and therefore what it means to us as believers. And so that we might have a greater understanding, which brings into anointing and a power and a grace to do the things that God has called us to do. Um, we, we need to understand that that God has called us to do the impossible. Um, God has called us to do things that that normally you can't do. And so you can't do it if you don't have the anointing of God. You can't do it if you if you don't have an understanding, you know. Um, you know, sometimes God does things that you have no knowledge of how he did it, but he just did it by his power. And there are other things that you can quantify and say, no, that happened. God gave you a grace, a strategy, or a way of doing that particular thing, but you, you knew, you kind of understand how that happened. So, had those conversations on yesterday that really, really blessed me, really, really ministered to me, that really, really helped me. Um, this morning, woke up, and I was taking my son to work, and, and I listened to Eric Thomas, and he was talking about you owe you. He has a mantra that is, that is on a, in, a, in a book that he's releasing, and said, you owe you. It's up to you to make um, to make it happen. You can do good and people will receive your good. You can give and people will receive your give. You can show love and people will receive your love. But you need to understand that we live in a society that they, people, people, the world will take your good and, and offer you nothing in return. And I'm telling you, uh, what I've experienced is that when you are making sacrifices, um, people, uh, good people, but no bad and malicious intent. There's just this thing in us that if someone is, there's this thing in us for whatever reason, I don't know why we in America think this, and maybe people all over the world think this, but that you, um, that, that it's your responsibility to take care of me, or I'm looking to gain something from your life, you know? And so as a result, um, very few people take on the added things of very few. I don't know everybody, but people all don't always assume the responsibility for their own life. And more importantly, what was driving me with, th with this conversation is, you know, if, where am I looking for other people to do for me that I need to take the responsibility myself? And, uh, and one area I've been playing with this, um, idea uh, uh, I'm, I like doing investing, um, but investing requires money <laughs> or capital, and it requires time, and it requires a right frame of mind, because you don't realize that what, what amazes me when you get into investing is that you enter into a trade and thinking that the trade is going to work in your favor. And unless there's this mo huge momentum, um, the trade is like, I remember one year, a couple of years ago, uh, Tesla was going up by like 50 points every 50 minutes. And I decided to jump in on it and purchase you know, several options of Tesla and jumped out of it. And in about 15 minutes, I made $5,000. 
And so when you have that kind of price action, that type of momentum, and you just jump in and it seems to work in your favor. But when you have price action that you're looking for that's going to move in a certain direction over the next few days, um, that is a different setup. Um, and and as a result, um, as a result, it, um, it, I know it's going to run a little bit. As a result, um, you, you'll get into a trade and the trade goes the opposite way. And I'm amazed by this. There's no way in the world that my small little sand amount of money in this trade, in the, in, in, in this, well, in this trade is affecting the way that trade should go. But it happens all too often. You get into a trade and the trade goes the other way. And so you have to wait to either one, that it recovers or two and it gets back to zero so you can get out of it as a break even and ironically sometimes you you know you get out of it and the trade goes on in your favor and you're like okay i got into it um when i thought i should and it went against me i get out of it thinking it's just to break even or just to you know take a small loss only to have the trade to go in my favor afterwards and so and this has to do with the psychology there's a psychology um, of trading that you got to get in. One of the things that they're offering now is um, something called bot trading. And in bot trading, you you actually put in certain parameters of when you want to get into the trade, when you want to get out of the trade, and the computer executes the trade for you. And so in, in doing that, you... Um, you take your emotions out of it. And sometimes um, in trading, they will train you um, to become very mechanical. You know, look, all you're looking for is for your proper, what they call the setup. And these are, you know, at, at a certain price point, at a certain momentum, um, at a certain... Um, other variables that you're looking for that once your 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 trade meet these setup parameters, you enter the trade and you set in uh, what we call stops to get you out of the trade. And you set in target points as to okay, if I'm if I'm going to hypothetically ABC stock is trading at let's say you you know stock prices go up like this and consequently they go down like okay let me uh didn't intend it to do that stock prices go up like this and when they go down they go up they go down like that so it's like a tree like a christmas tree right and so a lot of times people get faked out the stock is going up and then it retraces and comes down here and so they get out of it only to have the stock to go rally and go further up past the point. And you're like, man, I got in at it, say right at here. Um, it's going up and then it retraced and I tried to protect my losses. So I got out of it right there and then now it goes up. Or you set a stop point that wherever you get got in at, you says, okay, just a little bit below that. Uh, it gets out. So let's do it on this line right here. Let's say you got in at this point. And you said, I'm going to set my stop right here. So the, it begins to go up, then comes back down and stops you out, takes you out at a loss. Now you're taking a loss at this point. Say you spent $100 and then you lose um, 50 of it when it comes down to this point. So you take a $50 loss and then it rallies and goes back up. This is stock trading, uh, at least short term. You know, anything less than seven days or something like that or day trading. This this happens all too often. And you have to have the risk tolerance in order to stomach this pullback that happens right here. And says, no, I still believe it's going to go up and you hold on to it until it rallies. Now, you know, um, yeah, well, I could take that further. But anyway, bot trading allows you not to um, be emotional. The only thing is you would set parameters that says, okay, if the stock drops to here, take me out. That's called a stop loss. Take me out. Now, is 
is there a potential for it to rally and go up? Of course it will. But what if um, it was to continue to go down? Well, you just protected yourself from uh, a major loss. Uh, but bot trading takes a lot of the emotions out of it until you develop the discipline, the risk tolerance to do it yourself. And so there are, are companies now that are offering that type of um, uh, uh, information. So I was thinking along that I like investing, but I also like, um, something that is called network marketing. And I like network marketing because it allows you to develop the entrepreneur per newer. I hope I'm spelling it right. Uh, mindset. And if you came out, uh, if you were a a, a wage earner, um, you don't, E-A-R-N, if you're a wage earner, you don't have this because you don't have the risk tolerance. You're looking, you're, you like going into work, putting in your hours and knowing that you can get paid for your hours, representing of your hours, representing the, the, uh, the work that you, by the time you've been on the job more so than the work that you actually done. A uh, good manager is going to make sure that you actually producing results for the time that they're paying you. And uh, so nevertheless, if you're a wage earner, you're used to clocking in and getting paid for time. But as an entrepreneur, you have to understand you got to get paid for the work that you do, the, the results that you get. So network marketing offers you the ability to begin to cultivate that because um, uh, this right here, takes um, the limit off. I should say, not takes the limit off. I shouldn't say that. I should say raises the limit. Whatever your hourly wage is, is whatever your hourly wage. Whatever your salary is, is that's your salary. You're on a, a, some form of a fixed income. When you are an entrepreneur, you take the limit off and your limit can be whatever value that you bring to the marketplace. And so what network marketing does, it does that for you because you start to develop an entrepreneurial mindset, but it does that because you get an opportunity to leverage um, your, your work. Uh, I'm trying to say that you leverage your work by working with other people <clears throat> and encouraging them to do the same thing that you do. So if you're buying the product, consuming the product, um, sharing the product with other people and, and, and those individuals want to develop either, they, they just want to be consumers of the product. Um, uh, you know, they can just be consumers if they want to be um, um, business minded. They want to make money off of the product in the same way, way that you ha you can. Uh, they also have the opportunity to do that. And when they do, you have the opportunity to leverage your uh, your, your work. And you need that. You need the ability to do that because you want to earn money when you are no longer out there doing the work. It's the same thing as... Um, uh, you're a songwriter or you're an author of a book. If you're a great author and you do the research and you do and you put out, you're able to communicate your thoughts and ideas in such a way that a publisher reviews your, your content and says, hey, we're going to back you. We're going to um, communicate um, and give you this contract. Well, as long as that book is in circulation, you're going to make money. As long as that um, um, content is out there, you, you know, how... how uh, if you sent, wrote a song, as long as that song is being played, sampled, whatever, you're going to make money. And so same thing as investing in real estate, uh, especially if you invest in real estate in multifamily um, dwellings. Um, that money, you've put money and you did the work on the front end for that property to develop and provide you passive income on the back end. And so uh, if you ever play cash flow, and I'm going to put this in here. There's an excellent game by the Rich Dad Company, and it's called Cash Flow. And they teach you, in playing the game, it's like Monopoly on steroids. It's like Monopoly. 
but it, it, it allows you to understand the importance of how to move from a wage earner to a entrepreneur. And, and, and I'm amazed about all of the, the things that you have to do in order to change your mindset. Because if you, uh, unless you just got that little quirk in you that, you know, you were selling candy when you were a kid or you were, you know, hustling when you were kids, you know, the paper route or you, you know, when you got your license, you're a piece delivery person because you got that hustle in you because you, and it generally become, came, comes, is birth out of um, a need. You know, um, maybe your family is struggling financially and you say, you know what, I want a better life for myself. And so you, you, you create this, this hustle in you. Um, and so, you know, uh, if you're like that, then, then you have this drive in you to want more and create a better lifestyle. Um, and I, I can imagine in today's world, there's a myriad of things that we can do. Um, to motivate us now. I mean, you, you're looking at the lifestyle of other people um, and that can some, sometimes be motivating. I just recently heard that, um, uh, what's his name? LeBron James is now classified as a billionaire and there are a lot of people who are um, showing him a lot of respect for doing it right, you know, getting with the right people, um, hanging around wealthy people. You saw him in a golf cart at one point riding with Warren Buffett. So he's getting someone to speak to him about how he needs to manage his millions. But but their lifestyle is so far ahead of us that it's hard to fathom going from a 15, 20, um, or even a 40, $50 an hour job to earning millions. They're so far ahead of us. So And you can't skip the process. You, you can't skip the process. Um, of developing the mindset, the psychology, because it, in your past, there are things that's going to try and trip you up. There are things that's going to limit you um, from being able to achieve your dream. And you may have to, you know, have some therapy. You may have to have some prayer. You got to do the mental work, you know, the emotional work in, in order to, to deal with those things. Because if you've been taught that um, um, to, to this, that like money is evil, um, you, and you desire to live, a, to be a good person, and be a righteous person. You're going to shun money. You're, you're going to, you're not, you're going to talk your way out of it. And you probably have spoken words that are just laying dormant out there until you get some, and then you're going to do some things to sabotage yourself. I promise you, I, I understand. I'm, I know what I'm talking about. So, anyway, I was thinking along that, and I said I like investing in light number marketing, and. And I was listening to a guy named Eric Thomas, E.T. And he has a book out says, You owe you. And it's about taking personal responsibility. It's his version. There are other books out there that, that you know, that, that speak to the same thing. But, I, you know, his day is kind of a little a hip hop language. And, his, and he speaks about from where he's come from. He says the mindset shift that he had to make in order to to go from where he was, homeless, eating out of trash cans, to, to where he is now, being a voice in his, in his society, a pastor, and so on and so forth. But he has a book called UOU. And it made me think about um, the challenges that, that's involved in network marketing. There are two main, there, there's the old style way, old style which is face to face. I should go. Well, face to face. You know, conversations. There's the old style way, and then there is the. Um, it's it's called a lot of different magnetic. Magnetic. Marketing. Um, um, it's also called attraction marketing, and uh, okay. And so, 
in these requires you getting educated, using tools that's going to help you to do your job, um, spread the word. Um, there's all uh, create funnels that help weed out the people who are not interested in. And but this one right here is sort of instantaneous. And I've been I'm not good at face to face. I, I'm not. Um, I'm, you know, running up into people's face and you have to deal with the psychology as to why you, I've been trying to figure that out for 20 years. I love the concept of network marketing. Um, I think it provides opportunities for people who don't have the skill set to generate um, hundreds of thousands of dollars that, uh, like a LeBron James, you know, or an entertainer, you, they don't have those opportunities. But this provides everyone the same opportunity um, to, mar to market a product that is valuable. Um, and get paid and get in a way that leverages your work off of other people's work and that because your work is being leveraged off of somebody on somebody else's work but everyone gets paid and just um and and i love this but doing the face-to-face -face, approaching people prospecting has not been a it's not a strength of mine and so i was you know in this dating world it's about reaching out to people and your friends and your family on facebook and saying hey um there's one particular guy that was with the company that was doing extremely well. He had a marketing face-to-face -face concept that was this. He, he would reach out and he says, well, um, one, I want to show you. I have something I want to show you. Uh, two, it'll take about 15 minutes. And, and would you take a look at this video? And that was his marketing. And he would just reach out to people and then he would just rinse and repeat, you know. Everybody he would talk to, he would say, look, I just got something I want to show you. It's going to take about 15 minutes. And just, you know, if you take a look at it, tell me what you think. And he went on to create literally hundreds of thousands of dollars and building a team to do this very same thing. Just reach out to the family and friends. Because theoretically, you just need, you know, we, I'm going to do a compensation video uh, one of these days. But... But, you know, suffice it to say, this opportunity is available for a lot of people. So, I'm going to this for about 30 minutes. I'm going to bring this in the end. I'm just, in some ways, just chronicling some ideas that's been happening. And, and you know, the commitment. In listening to Eric Thomas um, saying, you owe you, it made me realize the importance of... Um, of not sitting back and waiting on situations to change and people give me opportunities or, or whatever. I haven't gone into a lot of the details um, um, as much. I mean, there's much more details about what's going on, but nevertheless, um, suffice it to say um, that that message today kind of struck a chord with me. It said, you can't sit around and wait for other people to do for you, not even family. You have to take responsibility for you, for whatever result, whatever actions that you want. If you want money in your pocket, you want extra money in your pocket, you want money to pay your bills, you want um, whatever. You, you have to take on a responsibility for yourself. And so um, I, we'll, we'll see. We're, we're going to continue the road and, and um, take the appropriate uh, act on this and, and move forward. You guys be blessed. Hope you have a great